inspectors. I believe you have a number of uh, code inspectors that, are, that haven't been properly trained. How, how many code inspectors do you have now? We're around 64 uh, inspectors. I have to check to be sure of that exact number. But our inspectors more are, than that. But, yeah, our inspectors are some, are some of the well, some of the best trained actually as far as code enforcement officers in the state. So well, they're inspectors, uh, they're not officers, right? I think that is an important they distinction. Are, they they're are inspectors. registered. Yeah, they are registered with the state as code enforcement officers. And, uh, but and that, I'm sorry, and that's important. That registration. What is that registration again under the state that you're saying they're officers? It is covered by the, uh, the Department of Health, and actually, it is a registration for code enforcement officers. And so, uh, so that so is you something get that we, back we certainly specifically. I'd like to look and see what that is. And there's been some contention about whether they're officers or inspectors, and that, that I think there is an important thing there. So if you could please get that to me, that'd be, that'd be helpful. Let's examine a list provided by the City of Austin of city employees. This list is from April of 2015. Uh, I've highlighted this section here because it's the Code Compliance Department. You can see here in column A, it is last name, first name, middle initial, and this is the important part, column D is title. This is the job title for everybody in this department. And so we have assistant director of code compliance, assistant division manager, business process consultant. But here we are, code compliance inspector A, code compliance inspector B, code compliance inspector C, code compliance inspector trainee, code compliance investigator. And then you start having more of the the uh, the uh, support staff, the office people listed down in here. Again, division managers. Nowhere in this list of titles is the word officer present. The correct job title is Code Compliance Inspector or Code Compliance Investigator. This is a summary from the job descriptions from the, uh, the city of Austin. Again, you have division manager, assistant division manager, code investigator, code inspector C, B, A, and inspector trainee. Again, nowhere in this thing is the word officer used in their job descriptions. Uh, date approved, these are the dates that these things were approved. Uh, so it goes back as far as 2006 when inspector A, B, and C came into place. Investigator was 2013. A division manager is not listed, and trainee was a title that happened in 2013. So in November 26 of 2013 is when we start seeing a, a reconstruction of uh, job descriptions. And in the job descriptions, they have to have certain qualifications. Texas Department of Health certified or code enforcement officers, that's what CEO stands for. That's where the term officer comes from, is a certification, a license, not a job description. The International Code Council is another form of education that some inspectors are required to have. International Code Council zoning or International Code Council property maintenance and housing. Very important. We can't just dress somebody up in a uniform, give them a job without the proper training. So this shows that within one year of getting your job, you have to get this certification. You have to have a background check and you have to have a driver's license. In this summary, we see that the International Code Council, Property Maintenance and Housing and Zoning, are two certifications that inspectors, division managers, have to have. That was all changed in 2013, here. The job description is very clear that you have to get this certification within one year of employment. Now, this was adopted November 26 of 2013. Mr. Smart's statement on June 10th that said their people are the best trained. Yeah, I expect some are some of the well, some of the best trained actually as far as code enforcement officers in the state. Excluding holidays and weekends, their employees had 385 business work days to obtain these certifications. Again, once it was adopted here, we have a lot of people that were hired prior to that date 
but they don't have these certifications. Let's take a look at that list. Here's, here's the list of code employees, color-coded here. Here you have uh, division managers, assistant division managers, investigators, inspector C, B, and A. So let's look at the list here. Here's our International Code Council certifications, code enforcement officer, their hire date, and their current position. So you can see that some, most of them are current when it comes to their uh, Texas uh, code enforcement officers, but uh, Terry Roberts is not listed on the list. And again, you can pull this up, and you can see that Paul, uh, this is right off their website, Here's his license information here as it pops up. At one point he was expired, but now he's current. But over here in the International Code Council, he doesn't have any certifications at all. He's supposed to carry both of them, but he has no certifications. Yeah, our inspectors are some of the well, some of the best trained actually as far as code enforcement officers in the state. Some of them, yes, they do. You can click on the the appropriate website and you can see that uh, Edgar Hinojosa actually has his property maintenance and housing inspector that it expires 10 23 of 15 and the zoning inspector expires 10 28 of 17. Now of course these were taken in June and now it's October so I haven't updated this list to see if his certifications have expired but this is just a, a short list to show you that not all of the inspectors have the proper certification for the job titles that they hold. Yeah, our inspectors are some of the well, some of the best trained actually as far as code enforcement officers in the state. So when Mr. Smart makes a statement that his people are the are the best qualified in the state, it's not a true statement. They don't know how to have the proper certifications. At least they didn't when he made that statement. And actually, it is a registration for code enforcement officers. So let's be clear. Director Smart told the council that their code enforcement officers are registered with the Texas Department of State Health Services, or the Texas Department of Health. And while that's true, the Texas Department of State Health is the one that creates the licensing board for a lot of things, x-ray techs, trash techs, asbestos handling, and things like that. Here it is. Here's Carl Smart's registration. Here's Carl Smart's record. Carl L. Smart, registered code enforcement officer. His license status is null and void. He expired on 1031 of 2010. He held a, he held a registered code enforcement officer position for about four years and then he let it lapse. Now again, this has nothing to do with someone's job description. Let's look about the license details. A license means a license, certificate, registration, permit, or other form of authorization, including a renewal of authorization that a person must obtain to practice or engage in a particular business, occupation, or profession. Okay, if the status is expired, null and void, or if either status shows inactive, the licensee may not practice the profession and to operate a licensed business. Look at that again. If it's null and void, the licensee may not practice in the profession. Carl Smart is null and void. According to the State Department of Health, he may not practice in this profession. Could this be true? Why, yes, it's right here. And actually, it is a registration for code enforcement officers. This is from the Texas Statutes website. Uh, the Texas Statutes is where you find uh, state laws that refer to a lot of different things. And here in the Occupations Code, Chapter 1952 is where we find code enforcement officers, the general provisions. So anytime you talk about code enforcement officers, it comes back to the occupations 
Code, chapter 1952, this is where everything uh, originates from. Under definition, a code enforcement means the inspection of a public or private premises for the purpose of identifying environmental hazards, including fire health hazards, nuisance violations, unsafe building conditions, any violations of fire health, building regulations, statutes, or an, order, or an ordinance. Code enforcement officer means an agent of this state or a political subdivision of this state who engages in code enforcement. So here we have a definition. A code enforcement officer is an agent of the state or a political subdivision of the state. So Austin is a political subdivision. So a code enforcement officer is a term defined by the state for somebody who does code enforcement. Now, we require all of our people to, ha to be registered code enforcement officers, but look at, look at section 1952.003. Employment of registered persons not required. This state or a political subdivision, Austin is a political subdivision, of this state may engage in code enforcement without employing a person registered under this chapter. So here we have a very important note. Austin does not, according to the state, have to register any of their, any of their code inspectors as registered code enforcement officers. They are exempt by this section right here. So why would we go through all of the trouble to ensure that all of our people are registered as code enforcement officers when we don't have to? That's an added expense and other things. Why? Because the city of Austin, Carl Smart, wants to be able to use the term code enforcement officer instead of the job title of code compliance inspector. So, well, they're uh, inspectors, they're not officers, right? I think that is an important they distinction. Are, they, are registered, yeah, they are registered with the state as code enforcement officers. Let's talk for a minute about perception. Everybody knows this character here. This is Harrison Ford playing the character of Indiana Jones, an archaeologist who goes on adventures. We've all seen the movies. He's also referred to in the movies as Dr. Jones because in the college setting, he is a PhD in who knows, history or whatever, and he's referred to as doctor. In that setting, the title of doctor is appropriate. However, what if he were to don a white coat and a stethoscope and walk around and present himself as Dr. Jones? Is this misleading? Well, of course it is. While technically correct, he does have a PhD and he's a doctor, he's not a medical doctor. Or what if he put on some scrubs and a hat and walked around and introduced himself as Dr. Jones? Again, it is misleading. So isn't that the same? Isn't the same true of code compliance? The Austin City Code Department insists on using the term officer interchangeably with the official job title of that of code inspector. So let's do a little bit of an experiment here. We talked about misleading the public. The perception of the word officer. We'll go to Google and we'll type in officer. Let's see what comes up. Police officer. This is what the standard perception of officer is. Police officer, law enforcement, sheriff. Let's go to images. And again, they refer to themselves as officers, or, or management does. But how we dress our employees is another part of the uh, issue. So let's look at images for officers. Again, you see some military officers. You see mostly police officers. Again, a military right here. Some cartoons. One thing to note is when you look at the division managers and things like that inside of the code division, you'll see that they have little stars on their their collars. They have insignia. Again, 
wanting the public to believe that they are officers, dressing as military-style officers. Again, they're not a law enforcement agency. The term officer is misleading. It makes the public assume that they're a law enforcement agency, and they are not a law enforcement agency. Okay, uh, allow me to uh, review this PDF with you. It's available. Anybody want it, I'll be more than happy to send it to you. This is a collection of email signatures that I've collected over the last year from code employees. And this is where I summarize that the use of the term officer when speaking of a code department employee is misleading. The city dresses up code employees in a uniform similar to local law enforcement officers. We pin a big badge on their shirt or employees use a belt clip style badge. Then we purchase vehicles and outfit them with decals of big gold badges on the doors, red, clear, and blue light top bars on the top, very much like law enforcement patrol cars. We even tent the windows so people can't see what the code people are doing inside the car. All of these elements present the illusion that code employees are part of a law enforcement agency. They are not. They are an extension of the permitting and building code process they are the agency that deals with overgrown lots, illegal dumping, and dangerous buildings. Here are some examples of email signatures I've collected. So Troy Collins presents himself as a code officer with the City of Austin Code Department. He, he displays the badge of that of a code officer. Troy Collins is a registered code enforcement officer with the state, but that is a certification. It is a license that he holds. It is not his job title. Javier Martinez, a registered code enforcement, he can't even spell the word officer. Again, the badge, uh, the title, uh, he's actually an Inspector B, but he's using the word officer, giving the illusion that he's law enforcement when he should be using the title Code Compliance Inspector B. Uh Marlena Wright, code officer, again the badge, multifamily commercial district, city of Austin, uses the image of the badge when her job is actually a code compliance inspector B. Her state certification, although, shows her as a registered code enforcement officer in training. So she's saying she's a code officer, but she's not a registered code enforcement officer with the state. She's in training. Okay. She is one of the few that actually do hold the International Code Council Property Maintenance and Housing Inspector Certification as well as a zoning inspection. But again, she is misleading the public by presenting herself as a code officer, not a code inspector, and the use of the badge instead of this, the uh, department logo. Michelle Stark, code inspector. Now that's a little bit better. She still uses the badge. Um, she is a registered code enforcement officer in training, but she's not using the word code enforcement officer. Let's go back to our list. Michelle Stark down here is a code compliance inspector trainee. So now we have somebody who is, while they're not saying that she's a code officer, She's presenting herself as a code inspector. And the time she sent this email, she was actually a trainee and was giving cases to manage. Again, the badge is misleading. The term inspector is not her job title. She's an inspector trainee. This is perfect. Carlos Longoria is a code inspector for the City of Austin Code Department. He is using... The code, the current code logo, he is not using a badge. There's no misrepresentation here at all. This is what the standard should be for all code employees. Uh, the updated logo, not the image of the badge, similar to that of law enforcement officer. Again, ad identifying himself as a code inspector, uh, but he fails to list the grade of inspector. It should be code inspector A, B, or C. He's registered with the State Health Department as a Code Enforcement Officer. Uh, it expired 10-31-15. Again, I looked at this back in October, or excuse me, August, and I'm sure he's probably got his certifications up to speed. 
But again, this is perfect. Mr. Longori is not representing himself as a code enforcement officer because that is a certification that he holds, not his job title. This is what we need to move toward. In order to represent the code department correctly to the public, the badge logo should be removed from all vehicles and all written communications. The term officer should be discouraged and avoided when city council and the media refer to code employees.